everybody, I'm meteorologist Gavin Sandell. Well, we're getting to that controversial time of the year again. Daylight saving time is coming to an end. But before I go any further, though, I want to clear something up to you guys. You might mention it as daylight savings time. I've heard that a lot in my time here, but actually get rid of the S. It's a typical misnomer. It's not daylight savings time. You actually get rid of it and it's called daylight saving time. That's the official name of changing the clocks. Anyways, here's what it has to do with. It's been something that we've been dealing with since at least World War I over 100 years ago and they back then used it to conserve energy and coal and used that in the fight across uh, the pond in Europe. And it has to do with changing clocks an hour forward in the spring and backward in the fall, specifically at 2 a.m. on the second Sunday of March in the spring, we spring ahead, we go forward. We basically skip that 2 a.m. hour. Rather, in the fall, we do the exact opposite. We go backward. So rather than skipping the 2 a.m. hour, we repeat the 1 a.m. hour on the first Sunday of November. This year, it's on November 2nd of this year. So this is what the sunrises and sunsets are going to look like this weekend. Saturday, the last day of daylight time, sunrise at 7.54. Now you're flipping that 59 minutes before, so now it's going to be at 6.55 on Sunday. This is the thing, though, that people are really going to notice on Saturday. That sunset already early, uh, 6, 17 p.m., but once we get to Sunday, now this is a true winter sign, 5, 16 p.m. You can really start feeling it once those sunsets get a little bit earlier in our area. But regardless of all the shifting that we do, the day length is going to stay the same. We're already on that decline from the summer solstice down in June, and we're going to keep declining until we get to the winter solstice at the beginning of uh, the end of December, excuse me. We're at about 10 and a half hours of daylight, and once we get to the bottom, we'll be at about 9 until we'll rise in the uh, later stages of the winter and spring once we get to June for 15 hours. But like I said before, it's a very polarizing, controversial issue. There was actually a poll, a Gallup poll that came up earlier this year. People that liked daylight saving time and people that didn't like daylight saving time. 40% favor it, and there's actually been some moves in Congress and the House of Representatives of actually bringing some bills up. There's one that passed the Senate to actually uh, improve or have daylight saving time for the entire year. Didn't get past the House of Representatives, though. 54% the majority opposed daylight saving time. And uh, if it's any more polarizing, just 6% of the population was uncertain of whether they wanted to keep that or not. But let's talk hypotheticals now. What if daylight saving time was year round? Uh, these two values here, the earliest sunrise and the latest sunsets, those are a product of daylight saving time. But the earliest sunset, 553, that's why a lot of people enjoy daylight saving time or that's why they would want it so we don't have to get those pre 5 p.m. sunsets. Look at that, 8.47 a.m. if we did keep it all year. That's why people are a little bit wary of that. So regardless of your opinions of daylight savings time, though, make sure to change your clocks back an hour before they officially change late Saturday night. For Weather 101, I'm Gavin Sandell.